uh, Professor Eugenio De Angelis is a research fellow from the Centro di Ricerca Marco Polo, a center for global Europe, Asia connections of Kafoskari University. And his fields of research are mainly film festival in Eastern Asia and related cultural and economics policies. He's going to talk about uh, Shokutaku Jigoku, visions of family meals in Japanese cinemas. Good afternoon, Thank you, Georgia. Professor uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, would like to thank the organizer for having me here. I will share the, my thank you for joining presentation us. with you. Can you see it? Okay, so today uh, I'm going to analyze the dining scenes of three. Uh, films and the relation to the representation of the traditional family as in Japanese cinema uh, kitchens and dining rooms are often the place where drama unfolds, creating a striking contrast with the seemingly safe environment. Therefore, I will focus on uh, Otsu Yasujiro's uh, The Flower of Green Tea Over Rice, Morita Yoshimitsu's The Family Game and Miki Takashi's Visitor Q. Although these films vary greatly in terms of style, tone, and characteristics, the comparison between them will highlight the differences running through the decades and the problematic aspects of the traditional family in their own temporal context. The flower of green tea over rice differs from all the style of direction in the tone and the choice of characters. Uh, the gloomy script is counterbalanced by an, by an unusual light touch. And the story does not feature an old, uh, an old father abandoned by his daughters, nor sons visiting their aging parents, but a dissatisfied wife, an uncommon character in Otto's filmography. This is something Donald Rich links to Otto's wish to modernize an old screenplay he wrote during the war. However, he found him lacking in the attempt to graft new material onto old. The protagonists are Taeko and Mokichi, a long, a long time couple with no children, brought together by an arranged marriage and trapped in a midlife crisis as they are people with very different characters. The main subplot focuses on their niece Sitsuko, a rejection to have an arranged marriage like theirs, and a possible sentimental liaison with their husband's protege. As the original title, which is uh, Ochazuke no Aji, as this title openly suggests, uh, food is symbolically meaningful in the story. Ochazuke is a simple and traditional dish where green tea is poured onto white rice with or without seasoning. Three scenes connected with food and meals mark the main turning point, the points of the story and represent the symbolical development of the couple's relationship. In the first part of the film, the two are seldom seen together emphasizing the differences in their lives and a sense of detachment in spite of their marriage. The first dining scene features Taiko, the wife, taking a break from life in the city and enjoying a spa resort with two friends and their niece, Sitsuko. Uh, while eating and drinking in a beautiful ryokan in their matching kimonos, the women talk about their husband's flaws. And Taiko is the most cynical one. Their criticism is extends to naming carps in the pond below the room after their husbands. And once again, it is Taiko who enjoys the, the joke the most. Since she names the one resembling her husband's, her husband, Don Kansan, Mr. Thickhead, because the carp is not able to catch any of the food that she throws at him. If this scene is useful in describing their current situation, uh, the next one documents one of the biggest arguments between the couple, which marks a further break in their relationship. This happens when Taiko sees her husband pouring his soup onto the rice and sipping it uh, noisily. Mokichi loves this practice, but so far has restrained himself from doing it in front of his sophisticated wife. His accidental sleep shocks her and drives her away from the room in the next day, she boards the train to Osaka without notifying her husband. Ozu suggests that in an arranged marriage, one does not really know the partner, in spite of the length of the relationship. 
Later on, the dining table becomes the place where the couple finds happiness together for the first time. And Yoshizuke turns out to be the perfect dish to restore their relationship. This scene is preceded by a long one set in the kitchen, where the couple searches for the ingredients for the dish. Their confusion about the location of the ingredients mimics their lack of knowledge of one another. But this time, the tone is joyful, and the couple shares a new intimacy. Ochazuke becomes the symbol of their renewed relationship. While they share it on the traditional dinner table, Teiko realizes that a simple, modest dish like the Ochazuke can be as fulfilling as marriage to an unsophisticated man. In the flower of green tea over rice, Ozu gives the audience a realistic representation of everyday life in post-war Japan, analyzing how the institution of the arranged marriage is faced in the society of the 50s. Yet, criticism to this institution uh, does not come directly from the couple, but from the niece, as she refuses to conform to outdated rules in order to avoid being trapped in a life of unhappiness by her uncle. Setsuko also represents the type of impact that modernity and westernization had in Japan, and particularly in women, since her Western dresses contrast with her aunt's kimono. She then disrupts the highly hierarchical society by following her uncle to a pachinko parlor, a place traditionally reserved to men at that time. However, she is not portrayed kindly by the director, but rather as a lunatic, stubborn, and a bit spoiled young woman and she keeps the same attitude when she starts dating a man of her choice. If dining scenes are those defining the path of the wife-husband relationship, food emphasizes the differences between the two protagonists, conveyed through their culinary tastes. Mokichi likes simple and cheap food, while Teiko prefers sophisticated dishes. Even considering the couple's happy ending, Ozu's reading of post-war Japan family is still problematic, in the end, the blame falls onto the woman, since she is the one who has to conform to her husband's lifestyle to appreciate their relationship and the ocean decay itself. Analyzing films from different decades, it's useful to understand how economic developments affected not, not only what families uh, eat, but also the manner and location of their meals. Uh, this is most evident in The Family Game, a rather free adaptation of Onma Yome novels of the same title. The film is set in high growth era Japan, when the private space of the family has shifted from the traditional houses of the 50s to the danchi of the 80s. The numatas, comprised by husband, wife, and two teenage sons, live, one of these, live in one of these uh, anonymous buildings. In Morita's vision, they represent the rigid roles the Japanese consumerist society assigned to them. The father is a salaryman kind of person, often absent from home. The mother is the housekeeper, never leaving the house and caring about everything their sons need. The elder brother, Shinichi, is kind and studio oriented, while Shigeyuki is rebellious at the bottom of his class rankings and bullied by his classmates. The dynamics of this apparently normal family are disrupted when a Katekyoshi called Yoshimoto is hired to help Shigeyuki improve his grades to apply to a better high school. The film is a ruthless criticism of the entered exam war and the Japanese educational system. But it is also the unique mode of approach to the family in postmodern Japan, an absurdist tale on the middle class nuclear family life in the city. Speciality in the movie plays an important role, and it is one of the primary sources for comedy. The Numata's apartment is so small and claustrophobic that the couple has to go to the car to have private conversations, and the older brother can only access his room by walking to Shigeyuki's. In this house deprived of privacy, the dining, the dining table features as the central object. It is an unrealistic and untraditional table, for it is extremely long and narrow, and all the family members line up on the same side, eating shoulder to shoulder. Although extremely long, the table does not provide enough space for the four of them to move freely, even less so when the tutor is invited for dinner, hence reinforcing the claustrophobic feeling of the house. Furthermore, the shots involving the family meals are usually flat, as you can see in this image, 
much like in Leonardo's The Last Supper. And along, along with the several other elements, it contributes to the image's precise mechanical frontal flat humor. In uh, Mita's opinion, far from being an unrealistic object, the dining table is an accurate signifier of Japanese society in the 80s. When families uh, usually watch television while eating, thus reflecting the fictionality of reality itself and the resulting lack of communication. In this context, Tutor Yoshimoto is the disruptive force that, violating social norms, exposes the dysfunctionalities of the family. Similar to Pasolini's theorema, theorem, the outsider is able to bring to the forefront contradictions inherent to the family, which were never openly addressed by its members. Although the tutor mostly works in Shigeyuki's room, his disruptive power is most evident in the dining room, thus affecting the entire family. In fact, since it is the only shared space of the apartment, the dining room, the dining table features some of the most relevant scenes in the, in the film, such as the hilarious attack on the nuclear family in their last dinner with the tutor, held to celebrate Shigeyuki's accomplishment in entering a prestigious high school. It is a technically effective scene, a single eight minute take where the situation degenerates into a food battle, further exacerbated by the little space the characters have. The tutor puts an end to the dinner by literally knocking out every single member of the family, overturning the table, and then leaving the house. Yoshimoto has destroyed, the tutor Yoshimoto has destroyed the mother's sense of stability, and this character exposes the contradiction in the representation of the traditional family in Japanese cinema. Yoshimoto has steered off the mask of the family as a fake unit, where each member has to play out their reassigned role regardless of their real relationship. If in Ojo's movie, Taeko criticizes her husband's flaws uh, in front of her friends, and Mokichi talks frankly to the maid about his marriage problems, in the family game, appearances are all that matters, and everything is accepted for the sake of the children's academic career or to seem a normal middle-class family. In postmodern Japan, food and beverage became disposable commodities, something that can be thrown at people or spit in the sink, unlike the ingredients to make the ochazuke that were so well organized and preserved in Ojo's movie. They are mere signs emptied of their inherent properties, whose only function is to stand for signifiers of characters like the soy milk the father sips while being in the ofuro. In fact, when later in the movie the tutor asks for the same drink to the wife, is declaring his position as new head of the family. If the family game parodies the family unit in postmodern Japan, then Visitor Q by Miki Takashi represents a post-postmodern society, one that has already lost all its signifiers where parody has been replaced by nonsense and where what could be defined as a traditional family is already shattered. Shot in 2001 on digital video with a very limited budget, Mike was able to turn this limitation into a virtue thanks to, the, to his background in the V cinema industry and the chameleon-like ability to adapt his filmmaking sensibilities to almost any kind of scenario. It features the Yamazaki family and their inept father who is shooting a new a documentary about youth culture and in the opening scene finds out his runaway daughter became a prostitute. When he tries to interview her, he is lured into having a sexual intercourse with her. At home, his son, who suffers from regular bullying from three classmates, takes his frustration out on the mother, beating her for futile reasons. The mother is addicted to heroin and sells her body to middle-aged men to afford their habit. In this disconcerting portrait, the father brings a bizarre stranger to live with them, which affects the entire family. Just like the family game, it seems to be a variation based on Pasolini's theorema, but this time the visitor does not have the function to disrupt the family's dynamics. On the contrary, it will provide the necessary inputs to wake up the family and restore harmony in a rather peculiar way. 
Visitor queue features several scenes where characters are eating at the dining table, but they can be hardly called family meals, as the mere act of sitting to the, together is the only action resembling a normal meal. There are worse scenes instead, uh, since they usually involve throwing knives, beatings, and assaults with fireworks. Family meals are just a gesture of what a traditional family is supposed to do, even if there is no sense of family left. The woman diligently plays the role of a submissive mother, serving the dishes with a smile with a smile moments after being beaten by her son, while the visitor cheerfully asks for the okawari and the father keeps eating. This absurdist behavior is even more evident when the bullies destroy the house with their fireworks, and everyone keeps eating unbothered, except for the father who is filming a new documentary about his son. The parents' attitude at dinner reflects the devotion to their family roles, which numbed them to their home feelings, losing track of each other and their children. They are unable to communicate, as the only form of interest the father feels towards them is connected to his job, using the camera to observe his sons from a safe distance. Uh, it is therefore significant that the mother's awakening comes through food, when the visitor makes her rediscover femininity and maternal instincts by squeezing her breast, making her milk drip copiously. In a later scene, she is able to react to her son's beatings for the first time by throwing a knife close to him and then covering the kitchen floor with her milk. She later helps her husband kill the three bullies, the first activity they do together in years, while the son screams in her, in her milk, promising he will become a good student. The film ends with the mother breastfeeding the husband and the returning daughter, as maternity covers all the contradiction by embracing them in herself. Even through extreme form of expression, with characters embodying the social phenomena of Japanese society, in the end, Visitor Q reveals itself as a conservative movie at heart, as the unity of the traditional family is restored, centering it, centering it on the woman's maternity. In Ojo's film, the couple lives in a detached house with mates, keeps relationships with friends and colleagues, and is able to develop sociality. In contrast, the Japanese family of the 80s becomes a mere number inside a behir, the danshi, where nobody knows each other, as exemplified by Yoshimoto asking twice to neighbors where they must sleep without obtaining an answer. It is a seemingly inescapable, inescapable place, and the couple is never shown outside of it or uh, its car, its extension. In the 80s, the family is left alone, a nuclear family isolated from, yet closer than ever to the other families. The only scene featuring a direct contact with neighbors is an awkward, although hilarious, situation regarding a funeral, once again highlighting the inhuman dimension of the dungeon. The return to a traditional house in this torture does not improve the family's condition, as the building is literally under attack from outside forces, represented by bullies. Except for the, a father's colleague, they are the only sort of distorted form of socialization the that the family has. Their presence is even more effective than in the family game, because their souls tear down the house, graphically representing uh, the dismantling of the traditional family. As family uh, speciality progressively changes through the decades, the same goes for paternal roles and their function. The mother in Visitor Q could be seen as the evolution of the family games one, as both are scolded or ignored by their husbands, and both are treated like servants or worse by their sons. Their existence is the most miserable among the members of the family, and it is representative of women's condition in contemporary Japan. Nonetheless, the mother redeems its herself at the end of this Q, becoming the new centerpiece of the family. On the other hand, it is the husband father figure that emerges as the weak one in the three movies. Even considering the rather positive characterization of the husband in the flower or green tea of her eyes, all three of them are symbols of failure. 
Mokichi fails in, in the most fundamental masculine duty in what is considered a traditional family, giving her wife a child. He is also extremely passive in accepting his marriage condition, hardly understanding uh, his wife's feelings. Uh, the Numata's father is mostly absent from home, and the tutor basically replaces him in the household. He hardly talks with, with his sons, except for discussing their grades, and he complains to his wife about everything that does not go as planned in the house, but hardly acts upon it. Finally, the, Yamazaki, uh, the Yamazaki's father can be deemed as the ultimate failure. He is useless at his job, as his projects are constantly rejected, and still, the only form of interaction he has with his family is through the lens of the camera, detaching himself from any sort of emotion. Most importantly, he's a failure from a sexual and educational standpoint, and in every other aspect of family life. As the last scene graphically represents, he regresses to his child self, entrusting the reunification of the family unit to his wife. Through these three movies, uh, the father figure has become progressively weaker since the post-war era, completely losing touch with the family reality, becoming unable to communicate with them, and finally delegating his duties to someone else. When it comes to representation of traditional family, of course, Ozu is certainly the reference point, since his style has been copied, modified, or parodied, even in very different movies, as we saw. In this regard, the family game can be evaluated as a parody of the home drama genre allowed, where Morita works against stereotypical representations of traditional family, targeting family meal scenes in particular. Morita updates the so-called Ozu style, which, which means fixed shot and low camera angle, to subvert its dynamics, showing a family with dissolved human bonds which is subtly different from the Japanese family Ozu described. On the other hand, if Ozu places the viewer among the members of the family by situating the camera at the tatami level, Mike overturns this approach in Visitor Q. The majority of the shots inside the house are far from the action, framing the kitchen from the hallway or covering part of the frame with shoji or objects. Considering the hyper-realistic quality of the digital video in Mike's movie, this gives a strong voyeuristic feeling to the images, drawing the viewer closer and assigning him the role of the peeping Tom. The three movies analyzed feature several scenes of family meal playing a functional role in the development of the plot. As the dining table changes from a traditional to a longitudinal, uh, to a western styled one, a progressive detachment of the family from reality can be observed. The dining room, the safest place par excellence, gradually turns into an intimate war zone where the drama unfolding inside the house plays out. Consequently, food loses its original function to become a literal or metaphorical weapon. In Ozu's movie, produced when memories of war privations were still fresh, food retains its specific value that this is why it is the dish itself, with its own taste and ingredients, to become the key to solve the marriage crisis. The family game depicts a postmodern society instead, where food has turned into a signifier of characters and where it is used symbolically to cover the appearances of the middle class family, until it is thrown to the ground, exposing the family's dysfunctionalities. Finally, Visitor Q does not need to employ food to create meaning nor for its symbolic value, because contemporary society has lost both. Food is either part of an emptied daily gesture and a proper weapon. In the end, though, it is the mother's milk, the most fundamental nourishment, the source for a renewed awareness and the foundation of a new family unit. Thank you for listening, and Goseicho, arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very much for your meaningful talk and your analysis on Morita Yoshimitsu, Mike Takahashi, and Ozu Yasujiro. Um, is there any question? May I intervene? This is Mr. Nishibayashi from Rome. Is that all right? 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, this please. is not the uh, question, but the, uh, thank you very much for the uh, wonderful presentation by uh, Professor De Angelis. Um, what I'd like to just say is that just the same as yesterday that I'd like to just uh, propagate or introduce what we have done in the uh, Japanese Cultural Institute uh, last month. And we showed the uh, 30 films, Japanese uh, films uh, as a part of the uh, online film, Japanese film festival. And one of them was Ochazuke no Aji. And uh, we planned to uh, show that film, Ochazuke no Aji by Ozu Yasujiro uh, last November as a series of the Ozu films. And uh, we uh, showed the uh, seven films of Ozu but uh, at my institute, but the, unfortunately, because of the uh, semi lockdown, uh, we couldn't get the uh, uh, spectators audience. And uh, we canceled that Ochazuke no Aji. Instead, we uh, replaced the, uh, some other films by Ozu. But the, anyway, I really wanted to uh, introduce the Ochazuke no Aji, but we made it on March 1st as a, um, 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 Japanese uh, art um, film festival. And uh, you know, what I'd like to stress is that as many as uh, 1,000 people saw that film, enjoy that film. If we show that film at my institute, only 50 people uh, could have seen it because the, uh, the, uh, the social distance problems of the uh, COVID-19. And uh, so we're, we are very pleased to show that film uh, as many Italian people as possible. So that, that's a sort of the uh, merit advantage of the uh, uh, online or owing to the uh, COVID-19, uh, more audience, more spectators enjoyed uh, that film. And uh, probably they uh, enjoyed that the uh, Oz's film, and although that that film was made in 1952 when I was born, and uh, it's a bit uh, old-fashioned, and uh, Japanese culture changed, and uh, now everybody, even the higher uh, ranking people or society people, uh, enjoy the ochazuke, very ordinary food. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you, Nishibayashi San. I think you did a beautiful job uh, with the Japanese film festival. So I'm very happy you share with us your, your opinion about it. Well, thank you very much for your time, Professor De Angelis. It was a very wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.